Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. How is everyone doing today? July has been an awesome month for gaming. We had games like Ghost of Tsushima, we had Ty the Tasmanian Tiger come back, we had Destroy All Humans come back, and these games have been awesome, awesome titles. I think July was unexpectedly a really solid month of games. But July is now over and August is kicking off. So today I wanna to take a look at seven games that are coming out for the month of August on the PlayStation 4 that you need to check out. August seems to be the month of the sports game and there are a ton of sports games to get through here. Let's dive in and take a look at the games. No, you don't mind the way I stand my mm, you know. Now the first game for this month is Fall Guys. This comes out on August 4th and for any of you PlayStation Plus subscribers out there, you'll be getting this one for free on August 4th when it comes out with your PlayStation Plus subscription, which is a really, really neat thing. Fall Guys is a online only multiplayer party game. The game boasts 60 players online and around in this sort of free for all struggle. And that's taken directly from the developers' websites. To me, it feels like this gauntlet battle royale Takeshi's Castle thing where everyone is kind of battling to survive this, this obstacle course of sorts while also trying to hinder your opponents and other players and things like that. I think it's a really cool concept for a game and having this free on PlayStation Plus is gonna be enormously beneficial to it, giving it an instant player base, which is something that's just needed. A game that requires 60 people to play online together. So I think it's really, really cool. Hopefully they'll allow cross play as well so you can play with other consoles, maybe PC players and Xbox players as well but this game comes out on the 4th of August and it's something you're gonna want to check out so next up on the 7th of August we have Fast and Furious Crossroads this is the Fast and Furious standalone game for PlayStation 4 I, I really do feel like this game would have benefited from coming out at the same time as the movie which was probably the idea behind it when it launched well when when it was announced however with the movie being delayed by a year the game still obviously has to come out on PS4 it's a action adventure racing game so not just racing there's there's sort of racing elements to this but also I, I guess like action type elements as well uh you can kind of like see elements from twisted meadow and other sort of battle arena type games in here so while you're racing your car you're attacking things shooting at things i don't know I, I, it kind of reminds me a little bit of spy hunter on ps2 if you guys remember that game uh and so this is yeah it's not obviously pure racing it's trying to take elements obviously from the films you know being focused on action and not just street racing like they used to be and create something kind of unique it's interesting because they got some of the cast to reprise their roles in the in the film in the game so vin diesel's here playing dom uh we've got michelle rodriguez playing liddy and tyrese gibson playing roman but that seems to be the only actors that are in this uh when you look through the main cast lists of characters in this we've got dom liddy roman we've got vienna Sebastian, Cam, and I have no idea who these guys are. I guess they were created for the game to kind of fill out the roster. Maybe they couldn't get all of the different actors to play those roles, or maybe they were too expensive. I, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on with this. The trailer that you can see playing now feels really, really uncomfortable and awkward. It's, it's a strange trailer. I have no idea why it was cut so poorly together, but this one is coming out on August 7th. I'm definitely going to be checking this one out on the channel, so stay tuned for more Fast and Furious information. Coming out on August 14th is UFC 4. This is obviously the fourth fighting game in the UFC franchise. You already know what these games are. This is a fighting game, essentially. Uh, MMA fighting game. The the main thing that this one's boasting, and as you can kind of see in the trailer here, are these like street fight type things. I guess they've created these new environments, this backyard cage battle fighting in. So they've they promoted the venues and stuff quite a lot in this one, as well as a roster of characters. In terms of gameplay, like actual like enhancements to this edition of the game, uh, EA have got three core things that they're focusing on according to their website, and that is fluid clinch control. Uh, they've got an overhaul on the takedown system, and then they've got this new ground pound thing. As you can probably tell by my like reading of these, I don't play the UFC games. I'm not a massive UFC player, but I know some of you guys out there are, so you're gonna wanna check this one out on August 14th if you're into that. The box art also looks really cool. They've done like this weird thing where they've got two images on the box art this time around. Uh, you, you should probably see it up on the screen now where they've got like the color image and a black and white image behind it. And I think it looks neat. They're doing this for all of the EA titles that are coming out this holiday, essentially. Now, jumping over to 2K, we have 
2K21 PGA Tour, or I guess PGA Tour 2K21. This is a new series. Well, this is a dormant series that uh, 2K is bringing back this year. They haven't had a PGA Tour in a number of years. And uh, it's pretty cool that they're finally tackling this one. Th because this is something that, I mean, it's a golf game at the end of the day, right? You're playing golf, but it's something that they haven't done in quite a long time. So they're promoting a full career mode in here. They're calling it PGA Tour Career Mode. You can create your own character. You can take on different golf championships. You can challenge the pros and, and build out your career. It, it's quite cool. It feels to me like, obviously, your career mode from NBA. Uh, they've kind of brought this across to their other sports games as well. And I like that. I like it when sports games put a story mode in their game. It makes it really engaging and interesting. I'm, I'll be honest, I actually play the story mode in quite a few sports games. I don't even really particularly like playing online or anything like that, but I do play it for that narrative. It's, I know it's kind of silly, but it excites me every year. Yeah, the, the, the other thing they're promoting, obviously, is they've recreated real-life courses that you can then play in the game as well. And that's... Uh, and that's PGA Tour 2K21. I actually think I might check this one out just because I haven't. It's so different, right? I haven't seen one of these in such a long time, and it actually looks really decent. The trailer makes it look really, really cool. I wouldn't mind checking the story out if it's a legit full story. And this one comes out on the 21st of August. Now, jumping back across to EA on the 25th of August, we have Madden 21. Obviously, Madden, long running NFL series of games. This is the 21 edition of that game and it's pretty damn cool. The cover art features Lamar Jackson. We've got the similar cover as we do with UFC, and I'm assuming FIFA is gonna have something similar as well when they reveal their cover star too, with this sort of like color and then black and white shot, which is really damn cool. I don't know whether or not this is gonna be a cross-gen title, whether it comes out on PS4 now, and then in a couple of months time, it comes out on PS5 as well, or whether it'd be an upgrade option. I'm not really sure if they've clearly stated what that looks like yet. They're promoting a couple of new features this time around. Uh, they've got this rise to fame thing. Off the website it says here, push the limits of your legacy in face of the franchise rise to fame. The new playable documentary career mode offers all out levels of agency and depth throughout your journey to the hall of fame, which is cool. I think it's essentially rise to fame is gonna be the new career mode in Madden, which is neat. Hopefully it's like a robust and proper career mode where they actually tell a decent story. It'd be really cool if that was the case. Same thing with PG. Yeah, if this has legitimately got a, a decent storyline to it, I'll probably check it out just for that, uh, which is kind of cool. They're also promoting Ultimate Team. Ultimate Team's around every year, though. It's nothing new. Now, the last two games both come out on the 28th of August. The first one is Project Cars 3. This is the third iteration of the Project Cars franchise. This is kind of interesting. These guys came out of nowhere. This generation have made three phenomenal racing games and they're really taking the sim racing world by storm. Uh, I would say like, as far as PS4 goes, Project Cars is one of the best sim racing series you can get on there if you're into that kind of racing. Obviously this isn't your arcade street racing like Need for Speed or anything like that. This is sim racing. Uh, this, this version of the game features and not necessarily new to this version of the game, but this version has 24 hour dynamic all season with a day night cycle, which I think is really cool. It's something that uh, Forza and GT have both kind of lacked a little bit in recent years in terms of like innovating that full weather system into their games. So it's really neat that these guys are going and doing that. And then uh, full scalable assists for all skill levels. So really trying to encourage players to jump in and play this if they haven't necessarily played a sim game before or they're maybe not as into sim games to try and encourage them to enjoy it. I can vouch for this a little bit as well because I played Project Cars 2 when it came out. I'm not particularly great at sim racing games and there's a lot of hand holding things in that game which do help you out so seeing them enhance that even further is kind of nice. Uh, this time around they're saying there's over 120 different tracks and 200 different cars that you can race in as well. I actually think this is down from last time. I'm pretty sure it was like four or 500 cars in the previous version of the game. I guess they couldn't enhance all of those perhaps, or maybe they're looking at doing it as DLC later. 200 cars is still more than enough though, if you're into these kind of games, I think. It's an enormous roster of content. And the other game coming out on the 28th of August is Wasteland 3. You guys might remember Wasteland 2 was like the the Western apocalyptic style RTS game. Well, th this is following on from that in the franchise. It's still your kind of like Western steampunkian kind of RTS style game. I personally don't play a lot of RTS games. I never played these the series when it came out. 
I'm kind of curious to check this one out though when it launches at the end of this month. The game focuses really heavily on its story, but the game also says that you don't need to have played the previous two titles to understand the narrative in this game. They're also trying to do things to enhance the tactical gameplay in this one where they're adding a vehicle system and additional environmental dangers into the game as well, where they're trying to like, it's expanding, I guess, the RTS genre from being just like your foot soldier attacking things to having like other dynamic things in the environment that impacts the gameplay. Uh, it's also got a full co-op mode, which I think is really neat. I love when you can play these kind of games in co-op with a friend and you can kind of be really tactical in terms of how you attack, who you attack, where you attack, when you attack with two different people. And it adds a different element to the game as well. I actually remember playing Divinity in co-op and we had a ton of fun doing that. So this was kind of cool as well. Um, they've also got a new base building mechanic implemented into the game as well. So yeah, again, just trying to enhance gameplay beyond your standard RTS elements. And there you have it guys, that is your seven games coming out for August 2020. Let me know in the comment section down below which of these games you're going to be playing this month, which of them you're picking up, or which of them you're curious about, and maybe ask any questions, and I'm sure the community will be able to help you out in terms of information about these games. This is obviously a really heavy month on sports titles, and they're probably not the thing I love the most, but, but I am super curious to check them out. I think this month for me, the things I'm most excited for are probably the Fall Guys, which is a free game on PlayStation Plus, as well as the Fast and Furious Crossroads. I know it doesn't look incredible, but I just have a morbid curiosity about checking this game out. And I think I'll also probably jump into some PGA Tour. I know it, it also sounds kind of funny, but it does look interesting. And if it does have a legitimate story mode to it, I think that's probably where I'm going to spend my time. But that's just me. Let me know your opinions and thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like. I would really appreciate that. Otherwise, I will see you guys all in tomorrow's video. Thank you so much for watching. Where is Crypto? He needs to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.